23 minutes before 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. This is the segment of AMO Cala Live that we call News Bites. We take news from around the world, around the nation, around the state, and now and then, even from around the county and the city, and we abbreviate them. We take the stories and we shorten them up, we summarize them, and we deliver as many stories to you as we possibly can in this segment. It is your best bet for catching up on the news. We put the news back in News Talk by doing this, and we invite you to tune in every morning, at least during this part of the morning, to, to catch up on the news. These are the stories the rest of the world is talking about. You don't want to be left out, and uh, some of them are hard-hitting, and some of them are not. We just just the way it is. The, the never-ending story right now is about the uh, the government closing down and the impending uh, default of the government. So let me start with that one. This is uh, straight from the New York Times. It was published this morning. I don't have the time, and here's what it says. Senator Richard Burr, Republican of North Carolina, a reliable friend of of business on Capitol Hill, and no one's idea of a bomb thrower isn't buying the apocalyptic warnings that a default on United States government debt would lead to global economic cataclysm. Mr. Burr said in a quote, quote, we always have enough money to pay our debt service. Mr. Burr pointed to a stream of tax revenue flowing into the Treasury as he shrugged off fears of a cascading financial crisis. He went on to say, quote, you've had the federal government out of work for close to two weeks. That's about $24 billion a month. Every month you have enough saved in salaries alone that you're covering three-fifths, four-fifths of the total debt service, about $35 billion a month. That's manageable for some time, he said, unquote. No, I'm sorry, the, the he said part would be before the quote. As President Obama steps up his declarations about the dire consequences of not raising the debt limit, increasing numbers of congressional Republicans are disputing that forecast, as well as the timing of when the Treasury might run out of money and the implications of a default, further complicating the negotiating situation for both Mr. Obama and Speaker John A. Bamer, who must find a way out of the impasse. And this is a sister story from CNN. CEOs of some of the nation's largest companies are calling on Congress to get it together. The federal shutdown combined with uncertainty over whether Congress's indecision might push the U.S. into default is making the country a bad place to do business. Global aluminum giant Alcoa, the, their CEO, Klaus Kleinfeld, accused lawmakers of acting like children. This is a quote. The last thing we need is those types of disruptions. Klein Seinfeld warned that it's not the right time to be in a political crisis, especially since the U.S. economy is just in the process of recovering. He said that lawmakers should open a serious discussion on fiscal reform, but first raise the debt ceiling, which will increase the nation's ability to borrow more to cover what it owes. And this is another quote. I think with grown-ups, that typically happens. And the next story is a science story from the Associated Press. A NASA spacecraft bound for Jupiter will swing by Earth today to get the boost it needs to arrive at the giant gas planet by the year 2016. Using Earth as a gravitational slingshot is a common trick since there isn't a rocket that's powerful enough to catapult a spacecraft directly to the outer solar system. Launched in 2011, the Juno spacecraft zipped past the orbit of Mars and fired its engines to put it on course for a momentum-gathering flyby of Earth. During the maneuver, Juno will briefly pass into Earth's shadow and emerge over India's east coast. At closest approach, Juno will fly within 350 miles of the Earth's surface, passing over the ocean off the coast of South Africa shortly before 12.30 p.m. today. The rendezvous was designed to bump Juno's speed from 78,000 miles per hour relative to the sun to 87,000 miles per hour, enough power to cruise beyond the asteroid belt toward its destination of Jupiter. Juno was scheduled to arrive at Jupiter on July 4th, 2016, after journeying 1.7 billion miles. Chief Scientist Scott Bolton of the Southwest Research Institute said he's pleased with Juno's performance so far.
This is from the Associated Press. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is in Brunei for meetings with top officials from China and its smaller Southeast Asian neighbors today, in which he will urge all countries to cool tensions over territorial disputes in the South China Sea. Kerry is making his case this afternoon in discussions with China's Prime Minister and the leaders of the 10 members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. U.S. officials said Kerry will call on the Chinese to accept a binding code of conduct to govern maritime behavior until disputes with the Asian states are resolved. Kerry has added an informal meeting with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov to his schedule this evening, according to a senior U.S. official. They are expected to discuss Syria and Iran. This will be their second meeting in three days. They met Monday at a different Asia-Pacific summit in Indonesia. And this one is from Fox News. It's another ugly symptom of the partial government shutdown, and this time it impacts the families of soldiers who are dying for their country. The Pentagon confirmed yesterday that as long as the budget impasse lasts, it will not be able to pay death benefits to the families of troops who've been killed in combat. Unfortunately, as a result of the shutdown, we do not have the legal authority to make death gratuity payments at this time, is a quote from Lieutenant Commander Nate Christensen, a Defense Department spokesman. He went on to say, quote, however, we are keeping a close eye on those survivors who have lost loved ones serving in the Department of Defense, unquote. U.S. stocks fell, giving the Standard & Poor's 500 index its biggest two-day loss since June, as concern grew that a deadlock among U.S. lawmakers over the debt limit could lead to a government default. An index of Internet stocks tumbled the most in almost two years, sinking 4.1%. Facebook and Yahoo lost at least 3.5%. Xerox slid 2.5% after announcing the U.S. has been probing the accounting practices of its outsourcing division. Al- Alcoa gained 1.5% in late trading after posting quarterly earnings that topped forecasts. This is from Bloomberg. And you're listening to News Bites. This is the segment of AM Ocala Live where we read to you the news summarized and uh, bring it to you very briefly and very quickly and squeeze as many stories into this segment as possible. Be sure to tune in each weekday morning if if you're a news junkie and you want to catch up on the news of the day and what may have happened overnight. Sometimes we get stories that just were released. This next one is one of those examples um, and it was released from the Associated Press Eight minutes ago, Boston school buses started rolling again this morning, the day after a surprise strike by about 600 bus drivers. But school officials warned that the dispute that led to the work stoppage was not resolved. A quote from school spokesman Brian Balu is, quote, we're still concerned about a similar action at any time and we're keeping our contingency plans in place. He warned that there may be delays and the buses couldn't be counted on for rides home. Wow. The drivers union said drivers agreed to return to work after the company contracted by the city to transport students. Veolia Transportation Incorporated agreed to meet with the union today to discuss grievances. Mayor Tom Menino, who was outraged by the strike, vowed to use every legal avenue available to get the drivers back to work and to punish those responsible for the work stoppage, called the development very good news. The uh, Wildcat strike yesterday stranded about 33,000 children who were shuttled to schools in police cars and offered free rides on public transportation. The school department said students had an 82% attendance rate yesterday, about 10% lower than a normal day because of the strike. Wow. Wow. This is from MSNBC. Federal food safety workers who monitor dangerous bacteria have been recalled from furlough to track an outbreak of salmonella linked to Foster Farms chicken that has hospitalized a high proportion of victims, including some with hard-to-treat infections. Nearly 300 people in 18 states have been sickened since about July by an outbreak of Salmonella Heidelberg, traced to raw chicken from three sites run by the private California poultry producer. This is according to Barbara Reynolds. She is a spokeswoman for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. About 42% of patients reporting complete information have been hospitalized, about double the proportion typically expected from a Salmonella outbreak. Uh, Reynolds is reporting that out of 183 complete cases, 76 patients have been hospitalized. Among those, many infections appear to be resistant to the most common antibiotics used to them. 
The next story is out of... Um, not sure where this is from, but I'm getting it from ABC News. Helen Mooseman, who is 92 years old, had hoped to use her life insurance policy to pay for her funeral. But last Friday, she got a letter from her credit union saying they would be canceling her fully paid up $2,000 policy, which her late husband, Ralph, had taken out for her 40 years ago. He had told her never to touch the money because it was a special policy that would pay double when she died. The policy was being canceled, according to the letter. Effective November 30th, her coverage would expire December 31st. Mooseman, who is from oh, here it is, Minneapolis, is one of thousands of senior citizens nationwide who stand to get letters like this in the coming days. The entity that created this particular insurance product is called CUNA Mutual of Wisconsin, does not cater to consumers. It serves member credit unions, including U.S. federal which is Moosman's credit union, providing them with a variety of products and services that they then can offer to depositors. Uh, Phil Schutte, a CUNA spokesman, told ABC News that the company does business with about 90% of the nation's 7,000 credit unions. It started offering Mrs. Moosman's type of a policy, life-saving certificate insurance in 1938 during the Great Depression as an incentive to encourage savings. Now they're taking it away from her. Wow. Wow. That's horrible. That is. That is horrible. Barack Obama is to nominate Janet Yellen to be the new chairman of the U.S. Federal Reserve, replacing Ben Bernanke. The president is due to make the announcement today at 3 p.m. at the White House. If her nomination is confirmed by the Senate, Yellen will become the first female head of the U.S. Central Bank. Bernanke's eight-year term ends in January 2014. Under his tenure, the Fed had to steer the U.S. economy out of the worst financial crises and recession since the 1930s. Several members of Congress were arrested yesterday by U.S. Capitol Police for blocking traffic during an immigration rally on the National Mall. As protesters marched toward the U.S. Capitol, several House Democrats sat in the middle of the street blocking traffic. Police led Representative... Uh, Keith Ellison, Minnesota Democrat, away in cuffs shortly after 4 p.m. Representatives John Lewis, Raul Grijalva, uh, Joseph Crowley, Al Gree, Luis Gutierrez, Jan Schwakowski, Charlie Rangel were all then arrested as well, according to police spokeswoman Kimberly Schneider. She confirmed it with the Blaze newspaper, and, the, and we get the story from the Washington Times. Randy Weingarten, she's a feminist, a lesbian, and head of the American Federation of Teachers, AFL-CIO Labor Union, <laughs> said at a press conference yesterday that the poor economy in the United States and lower wages for females is forcing women to work. This is Weingarten's quote, we have a war in this country and it happens when you are in sometimes the worst of the economic issues. We have huge income equality where women actually have to work to feed their families. The next story is from the uh, from the UPI Radio News. The White House said if Congress passes legislation establishing a so-called super committee on deficit reduction, U.S. Pre President Barack Obama will veto it. U.S. Representative Pete Sessions, a Republican from Texas, yesterday introduced a resolution calling for such a bicameral commission uh, with 10 members appointed by House Speaker John Boehner and 10 appointed by Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid to develop recommendations on discretionary spending levels for fiscal year 2012, a change in the debt limit, and reforms to direct spending programs, an executive summary of the resolution said. Again, that's from UPI Radio News. A week after the glitch-filled launch of insurance exchanges created by Barack Obama's new health care law, federal officials claim wait times have been cut in half and more people are successfully enrolling after days of intense work on the beleaguered healthcare.gov website. Officials have identified a failure of a major software component on the site as the cause of the crash that crippled the system and stopped people enrolling last week. The bottleneck is in part of the website aimed at letting people create user accounts at the start of the sign-up process. Some state-run sites that allow browsing without creating accounts report fewer problems. However, government
government officials say the main problems are driven by too many people coming to the site. Isn't that what President Obama wanted? Next, our out of uh, we get from the Reuters news agency, the state of Indiana and 15 of its public school districts sued the U.S. government yesterday, challenging its use of federal tax subsidies and penalties to implement President Barack Obama's 2010 health care law. The lawsuit claims that a rule issued in 2012 by the Internal Revenue Service that allows the federal government to provide tax subsidies for individuals to buy health insurance on federal exchanges contradicts what Congress originally intended in the Affordable Care Act, the law also known as Obamacare. This is out of the associ- this is from the Associated Press. The idea of a $15 minimum wage continues to build momentum in the Seattle area, with Mayor Mike McGuinn saying that he would support an effort to set the standard even higher. In an interview with the Associated Press, McGuinn saw- said that he thought $15 was a fair starting point for the minimum wage discussion. He cautioned that the issue was best handled legislatively and that the actual number would be determined by city council members. This is a quote from McGinn. If the council proposed a higher number, I'd support that. He is seeking re-election next month. McGinn challenger Ed Murray recently announced that he would push for a $15 minimum wage, but plan to proceed with a phased-in approach. Washington already has the nation's highest state minimum wage at $9.19 an hour, while San Francisco is the local jurisdiction with the highest hourly standard at $10.55 per hour. I have another science story from ABC News. Walk along the beach enough times and eventually you will come across a beached jellyfish. It looks like a squishy mass of tentacles and membranes drying out in the sun. But in its marine home, the jellyfish can band together with millions of other jellyfish. They're capable of achieving high enough numbers that they forced the Oka Charm and a nuclear power plant is shut off. A new paper from the Marine Biological Laboratory in Massachusetts and a new robot from the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology attempt to explain how jellyfish got to be one of the most prolific species in the world's oceans, as well as how to deal with their increasing numbers. Brad uh, Jamel, a postdoctoral researcher at the Marine Biological Laboratory, said that the jellyfish propels itself forward by contracting its muscles and creating spinning donut-shaped verticals of water. They're similar to smoke rings in the air, he told ABC News. The jellyfish sheds one vortex, and that's where most of the locomotion comes from, when the animal achieves its fastest speed. Other jellyfish researchers had focused on the initial vortex created immediately after the muscle contraction, but Jamal noticed that there was an additional and unexpected boost following its contraction. Traction. At first, I didn't think too much about it since it could have just been some noise in the data, he said, but it ended up being in every contraction cycle in a variety of different species and sizes. He went on to say the jellyfish creates a second vortex of water without contracting its muscles and expanding any additional energy. The second one actually rolls up underneath the animal, according to the scientists. It accounts for 30% of the length it travels in each contraction cycle. Uh, I'm just going to cut to the chase here. So they have, in order to protect the nuclear plant, a <laughs> robot. A robot that will literally shred the uh, the jellyfish into pieces. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Uh, this is from CBS News. An, an economic boom may mean a likely may mean a higher likelihood of death for middle-aged and older adults, according to a new study. This research was published on October the 7th in the Journal of Epidemiology and Community Health. It shows that death rates climb when the economy is good and take a downturn when the country is heading towards a recession. The current life expectancy in the United States is 78.7 years. This is according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The study authors point out that life expectancy has been growing because doctors have curbed some mortality risks for elderly individuals. The economy has been thought to play a role in this this rise because wealth creates health. 
Next story from ABC News. A U.S. official says the Obama administration is leaning towards withholding the delivery of additional F-16s as well as Apache helicopters to Egypt, withholding some parts of the $1.3 billion in annual U.S. military assistance to Egypt is seen as a form of leverage to pressure that country's military leaders to respect the human rights of its citizens following the ouster of President Mohamed Morsi in July. Morsi's overthrow led to a violent crackdown by the Egyptian military against pro-Morsi protesters that may have led to as many as 1,000 deaths. The violent the violence led to a review of U.S. assistance to Egypt. Since then, the administration has delayed the delivery of four F-16s and canceled U.S. participation in the annual military exercise with Egypt known as Operation Bright Star. A U.S. official told ABC News that the administration was now leaning towards withholding the delivery of additional F-16s as well as Apache attack helicopters also slated for delivery this year. United Nations officials set out a detailed eight-month timetable for chemical weapons inspectors to destroy the Syrian arsenal yesterday as Ban Ki-moon, the organization's secretary general, warned that the mission faced unprecedented dangers. Mr. Ban said that set out the hazards the inspectors faced in a letter to the UN Security Council. It said full-scale disarmament would begin on November the 1st, just days after the first parts of the stockpile were destroyed at regime bases in Damascus. The UN said that it would deploy up to 100 employees to finish the job by June 30th. The three-phase effort could ultimately involve some of Syria's stockpile of 1,000 tons of deadly toxins and gases being shipped for destruction overseas. Uh, divers carrying out the gruesome job of pulling dozens of bodies from a packed migrant ship that sank near the Italian island of Lampedusa, Lampedusa have been buoyed by the gift of rosaries blessed by Pope Francis. Working in difficult conditions and poor visibility, about 50 divers are taking turns to enter the vessel resting on the seabed at a depth of 154 feet. They slip in through a window to try to pull up the bodies that are still in the hole of the ship. The divers have spoken of a horrific sight of a pile of dozens of tangled bodies of men, women, and children who were trapped in the hold. One diver told reporters all those bodies packed into the wreck, almost all with staring eyes and their arms raised as if they were calling for help. The search for survivors at first and then bodies has continued ever since the first alarm was given by fishermen uh, last Thursday morning. The fishermen spoke of hearing sounds that they believed to be seagulls, but then realized they were coming from hundreds of people, mostly er Eritreans and Somalis, screaming for help in the water. Wow. Oh, how horrible. Uh, Nevada Governor Brian Sandoval said today that Nevada is in danger of catastrophic consequences if the federal government shutdown persists until the end of the month. Most state agencies are able to continue federal programs until the end of the month. Uh, Sandoval was told in a mini cabinet meeting that is meeting right now. But the cash strap state is already beginning to rack up a significant bill keeping essential programs running without the guarantee of the federal government reimbursing the costs. This is a quote from the governor, particularly at the end of the month, I think that's really when we are going to start to see some catastrophic issues going on for the state. And those are the stories we have for today's segment called News Bites. Robin, one thing Dan and I were not somehow able to do was count the stories. So uh, you're back and you counted them. How many stories today? 21. 21. Not bad. Uh, that's what we try to do each weekday morning at this time. We try to bring you as many stories in a short period of time as possible. We put the news back in News Talk. Remember, if you're a business and you'd like to advertise on this segment or any segment on WOCA's list of shows, call us. Come in here. Come in to the paddock mall and visit with Joe Martone, Dan Martone, or Tish Moeller. They'll tell you what it takes, and it doesn't take much. It's easy. They'll take you by the hand and set you up on a path to more business coming through your door by advertising on WOCA. We'll take a little break and be right back. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Larry. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala!
ABC News Now. I'm Karen Chase. As the government shutdown enters its ninth day, some agencies are scrambling to bring back furloughed employees for safety's sake. The FDA is calling back a handful of scientists to track a salmonella outbreak linked to chicken. And the CIA is calling intelligence agents to protect national security. Wall Street worries about a lengthy shutdown of sent stocks and 401k plans sliding. The Dow has dropped 900 points in the past three weeks. A high school Spanish teacher in Dallas is under fire after students discovered she once posed for Playboy. Some parents want her fired, saying she can't be a respected role model. Others say she's taught students the valuable lesson that once something's online, it can't be taken back. The secret to a happy commute is predictability and productivity. A Swiss study finds people can handle commutes of up to 45 minutes as long as they know how bad traffic will be and they can spice things up with radio or making conference calls. Tech blogs say Apple has set a date of October 2nd to unveil a new iPad and a mini iPad with a bigger screen. This is ABC News. Tell us what happened out there. I just had to keep driving forward. I knew the game plan and I was rewarded because of it. What was the key play? Using my BP Driver Rewards card when I filled up to save on gas on the way to the game. Do you okay. use regular cards? BP Driver Rewards. Become a member today and receive an instant 10 cent per gallon reward that you can use on your first fill up. Sign up now at BPDriverRewards.com. Single use only. Rewards good for up to 20 gallons. Terms and conditions apply. See BPDriverRewards.com for details and participating locations. Let's get it started. My business is on efficiency, and today I found my secret weapon the new services center at Office Max. Their team helped us upgrade our credit card processing and we saved a bundle. Didn't a dime for new equipment. Our profit is up and so am I. Introducing the new Office Max Services Center. Get your first $5,000 card processing free and save up to 15% or more on your monthly charges through North American Bank Card. Restrictions apply. See store for details. Don't ever miss a single edition of the Mike Huckabee Show. We're going to have a whole lot of fun talking the big issues of the day. We'll talk to the newsmakers and the issues that made them a newsmaker, as well as we'll bring you some entertainment, some fun. You never know what's going to happen on the Mike Huckabee Show. Don't miss it. Join Mike Huckabee every weekday from noon to 3 exclusively on WOCA The Source. Hi, this is Joe, and I'm your host for the new show, Damage Control, every Tuesday morning at 10.30 a.m., brought to you by Damage Control Services. We're going to be discussing floods, fires, storm and tree damage, sinkholes, mold, and many other disasters that you need to know about, how to prevent and prepare for them, as well as what to do when it happens and what to expect after it happens. This is Damage Control, Tuesdays at 10.30, right here on The Source. Hi, I'm Tom Ingram, CEO of Gateway Bank, inviting you to drop by our main office on Silver Springs Boulevard every Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. for the Community Gazette, a three-hour show focusing on our favorite community to live and work, Ocala, Marion County. Come join us with the voice of Ocala, Buddy Martin, in the new old-fashioned bank radio studio as we discuss a variety of interesting topics on the Community Gazette on WOCA The Source. Good credits, bad credits. It's none of our business because we're not an auto dealer. We're not a bank. We're not your mother. We're OcalaForSales.com, Marion County's marketplace for cars, trucks, and SUVs. We've got thousands of sellers standing by to take your call. No middleman. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. License and inventory change daily. Offer does not include below upcharge. Undercutting rust proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, your company supplier of banners, digital decals, yard signs, and magnetic signs. Where you give them approved artwork by noon, the next day by 4 p.m., you pick up your banners, digital decals, yard signs, and magnetic signs. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. That's 368-2404. Don't forget, they do vehicle wraps also. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. 
I'm Yvette, and I'm here to tell you a few things about ABC Frederick's Appliance. They sell not only new, but used guaranteed appliances. When you call ABC Frederick's Appliance, they will provide service on what they sell and any appliances that you own. ABC Frederick's Appliance is located in Bellevue, right over the railroad tracks. Call 352-629-5181. That's 352-629-5181. That's 352-629-5181. ABC Frederick's Appliance. Here are today's headlines from The Source, WOCA. With thousands of homeowners locked in their homes because of spiraling flood insurance rates, Florida regulators are working on a program to lure private companies to write flood insurance in the state as an alternative to the federal program. The Florida Office of Insurance Regulation is talking to insurance companies interested in coming to Florida and writing expedited flood insurance policies. According to Rebecca Matthews, the department's deputy chief of staff, she mentioned that in the Senate Banking and Insurance Committee meeting yesterday. Senator David Simmons, a Republican from Altamont Springs and chairman of the committee, said lawmakers must respond to the unintended consequences of the Biggert Waters Flood Insurance Reform Act of 2012, which would harm the state's economy. The act attempted to phase in a series of rate increases in the National Flood Insurance Program as a way to close the program's $24 billion deficit. The biggest hit will be to an estimated 268,000 Floridians whose homes were built before 1974 and are in high-risk flood zones. They will lose their subsidized rates when they sell their homes. For some homes, the increase could mean their rates will rise from $500 to $16,000, according to the statement. For the second time in two months, Governor Rick Scott, top jobs recruiter, is in line for a hefty raise in addition to a new six-figure golden parachute if Scott does not win re-election next year. Gray Swoop, CEO of Enterprise Florida, could soon earn $375,000 a year with a new base salary of $275,000 and incentives worth $100,000 more if he meets dozens of performance standards in his contract. Swoop now earns $230,000 a year. He received a $70,000 bonus in August. His new pact also entitles Swoop to severance pay of $137,500 for six-month salary if he is terminated without cause. As a political appointee who reports directly to the governor, Swoop is sure to lose his job if Scott loses his 2014 re-election bid. Enterprise Florida's Finance and Compensation Committee yesterday quickly approved Swoop's new two-year contract, which is retroactive to July 1st and would end June 30th of 2015. Complaints about the harmful impacts of releases from Lake Okeechobee into estuaries on both sides of the state may actually help water quality efforts across the state, according to the state's Agriculture Commissioner. Agriculture Commissioner Adam Putnam said yesterday that the continued attention given to state and local efforts to combat water releases from the lake into the St. Lucie and Caloosahatchee Rivers could drive lawmakers in Tallahassee to support additional funding for water issues across the state of Florida. State lawmakers earmarked $10 million to protect Florida's natural springs during the year's legislative session, reviving after two years the restoration efforts started more than a decade ago. Senate Environmental Preservation and Conservation Chairman Charlie Dean, a Republican from Inverness, has said he does not want the 2013 funding to be a one-time allocation. Putnam said he will pitch lawmakers on spending $5 million to help farmers and ranchers reduce nutrient runoff. Fishing guides who make their living in the waters of Everglades National Park plan today to protest the park's closure due to the federal government's shutdown. Organizers expect to bring together more than 100 protesters on boats, kayaks, and paddle boats for the rally. It will be held at 1 p.m. today in Cowpens Channel, a part of the intracoastal waterway near the eastern boundary of Everglades National Park near Isla Mirada. The park has been closed on land and on the water since the shutdown began last Tuesday. Fishing guide Randy Toe of Isla Mirada estimated that 100 guides are not able to go fishing because of the closure and are losing about $600 a day. Fall is a prime time for visitors who come to the Keys seeking redfish, snook, tarpon, and trout in the Everglades National Park waters, according to the Florida Keys News Bureau. And those are the headlines from the source, WOCA 96.3 FM and 1370 AM. Hey everybody, this is Kelly Hart, your new host of the Ocala Magazine Radio Show. Join me every Friday at 10 a.m. when we bring the pages of Ocala Magazine to life with in-depth interviews from and about your community. So don't miss Marion County's favorite city magazine, Ocala Magazine, every Friday at 10 a.m. right here on 1370 a.m. and 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. 
up for this year's Marion County Heart Walk and be part of a local movement that's helping others live longer, healthier lives. Join Chairman Dr. Jim Henningsen and walk with us on Saturday, October 5th at Baseline Road Trailhead. It's a free event promoting physical activity and heart-healthy living. To find out how you can help the fight against the number one killer of all Americans, visit us online at marionheartwalk.org. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. Thank you very much. It's uh, 12 minutes after 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Wednesday morning. Robin McClain back in the studio again after her visit to New York. And I wonder, Robin, did you hear, I mean, was this already something we were talking about before you left, about the Ocala pumpkin run? Did you did you hear about this one, or is this something we got after you left? I can't remember. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I did hear about this one because uh, it was on Matt's show last month. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I, just, I just can't remember how far uh, back we got this. With personal but we, care, we yeah. kind of got into, oh, that's right, that's right. We, we kind of yeah, got into the gentleman in. Yeah, um, I wanted I wanted to bring it up again real quick. I wanted to mention though that you've been busy uh, already back here <laughs> to, jumping on things. Uh, we were scheduled to have Aaron Snyder on. He's a diabetes survivor and he's got a book called The New Diabetes Prescription: The Diet, Exercise, and Mindset Revolution. Don't know where he is or. Um, why he has not called us, but we will just move forward uh, and hopefully have him on another day. We do have another person speaking about um, her diabetes. Linda Wagner is coming at eleven five, so maybe her information is similar for, for, as his. I don't. I don't really know. Yeah. All right. So let me talk about the Ocala Pumpkin Run. Okay. Now, my misunderstanding of the Ocala Pumpkin Run simply because of the name. I thought it was a race. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, it is yeah. not a race. This is basically a three-day car show and festival. Uh, if you haven't already heard about this, this is something you might want to put on the calendar to show up for. It's October 25th, 26th, and 27th. And uh, gosh, I, I, every time I read that, I keep forgetting which days they are. Is that Thursday, Friday, and Saturday? I believe so. See, so, yeah, I... I uh, always you, make a yeah. note to yourself when you have, when you put it. Right you have a calendar, okay? Oh, I, I have a calendar. Anyway, bigger, better, louder than in years past is a three-day car show and festival. If you like fancy yeah. cars, classic cars, old yeah. cars. I'm sorry. What 25th, is it? Twenty fifth, twenty sixth, twenty seventh. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Oh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Now there are a couple of things happening at the Pumpkin Run that I wanted you to know about in, because in addition to the car show, I mean, if you like car shows, then you're already in, right? You yeah. you already want to go to this, and this is huge. Now let me tell you where it is. First of all, it is in the on the property that is the backyard of the mansion on Highway 27 where the Castro family once lived. Oh, okay. The Castro Mansion is, I guess, what mm -hmm. we, we call it. Uh, for those who don't know, the what was Mrs. Castro's first name? Teresa. Teresa Castro. Yes. Bernadette's mother. You probably all know Bernadette because she's the daughter, but Teresa's passed away. Yeah. Teresa and her husband. Bernard. Bernard, thank you, mm -hmm. um, lived there, and, and he was the the inventor of the convertible sofa. Yep. Uh, the Bernadette, by the way, when she was a little girl, appeared in the commercials. I believe they started in New York, actually. I think so, right? yeah. And uh, so he invented the convertible couch, the convertible mm -hmm. sofa. You pull it out, make, you make it into a bed. The Castro I mean, now, now everybody has some variation of that. They're not all made by Castro, but... Mm -hmm. Everybody has some. So that was the invent inventor. And he made a lot of money from it. And when he was looking for a place to, to, to build his mansion, he was driving through. This is the story. I remember Bernadette actually told us the story. Yes, she did. They were driving through our area here. And it reminded him of the hills of Italy. And so he built the house that, that is now referred to as the Castro Mansion over there on Highway 27, and it's a huge piece of property. They bought a lot of land, built a little nice big house on it. Of course, the house is now not occupied. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't really know the story about the house. Um, but they were, I mean, before John Travolta lived in our area, the celebrities in this town were, were them. They were, yeah. they were it. Uh, Bernard and... Teresa. Teresa. I always forget her name. Mm -hmm. Bernard and Teresa Castro. And then, of course, Bernadette became very prominent in our community as well. Uh, 
So uh, apparently Bernadette has um, given permission to the folks who put this on. This is a fundraiser. Ocala Pumpkin Run is a fundraiser. Given them permission to have their car show behind the mansion. Uh-huh. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you don't get to go back there anyway. <laughs> yeah. And now you get to go back there for a real good reason, which is to see this three-day car show and festival. Um, for, if you need the address for your, what do you call it, GPS system, it's 7700 yes. Northwest Highway 27. And, and in addition to the car show, there are a few things, uh, and I don't know that I have all of the details, but let me, let me see if I can tell you some of the things. There's the Extreme Dino Challenge. Now, this is a one-fourth mile side-by-side drag racing event. Oh, wow. Don't know. Don't know if you do that in your own car or not. Then there's the Bernie's Speed Shop Racing Challenge. Prize is awarded. It's going to get loud, it says. And then there's the Redline Memorabilia Auction happening on Saturday. And then there's the special motorcycle area that they have. Um, there's a Harley and a Ducati. Okay, I don't know. Are they in a Ducati? I don't either. Uh, The Beautiful Moments Lifestyle Pavilion will be there, a fully tented area showcasing special products and services for your family. There's the Family Fun Event. Family and children's events uh, include uh, something called Trunk or Treat, a hay maze, a a pony ride, uh, a hay ride, pumpkin decorating activities, and a whole lot more. There's a concert series that's going to be put on. Uh, Tobacco Road is is playing on Saturday, and that's presented by Coors Light. So there's a concert going on back there. That's pretty awesome. There's the Fast Model Car Show. Registration's available on the show grounds. Make and takes available Saturday. Go on the website for details. I'll tell you where the website is in just a second. It is, let me find it before I forget to tell you. OcalaPumpkinRun.com OcalaPumpkinRun.com WOCA will be there I believe Joe Martone and Matt Gibbs will be doing a, a remote broadcast Oh, isn't I think, that cool? I think they're doing it from a golf cart the way I understand it <laughs> Well, you have to have some kind of transportation to cover all of the area because it's huge Horsepower in horse country returns as Ocala once again becomes the backdrop for a premier car show at the beautiful Castro Farms scheduled for the weekend of October 25th through the 20th Seventh, and uh, I want to go back to one thing I said because I think I may have gone over it and needed to tell you more. I think the Extreme Dino Challenge quarter mile side by side drag racing is n- is really in a car, and oh. it really is in your car, but you're not really going to be moving. Oh, the, what it looks like. I'm going to show you the picture. Uh, you uh, drive your car up onto a ramp, and then you put your your tires into these devices that will spin, almost almost like a treadmill, I guess. Really? And then somebody else drives up on the ramp next to you, and then the the lights go from whatever the colors do to make it, to, you know, ready, set, go, like, uh-huh. like they do on a drag racing. Right. And you literally are drag racing with somebody else next yeah. to you. Oh, how cool You're not is really that? going anywhere, but there's a device, I guess some kind of a measuring piece of equipment that'll tell you who's going the fastest and then after approximately what would have been a quarter of a mile you're done and whoever wins is the winner i don't know if you get anything wow how cool is that Uh, it looks scary it looks like uh i wouldn't do it because i'd be afraid i'd drive off the edge you see it right there yeah yeah it looks (laughs) real scary but boy that would be something cool to call me a wimp or just call me a guy who can't afford to lose his car <laughs> uh, but it does sound like fun, that is and so uh, awesome. and what I do not know, I've Robin, never seen that before. I do not know what the proceeds go to. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Is it a, a paid event? No, you it's for free, right? I think the, uh, they the event itself right? is free, right? Yeah, yeah. But the other things. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Please they, don't. They charge. Okay, I'm wrong. It's it's twelve dollars. Yeah. yeah. Twelve dollars a day. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Twelve dollars a day. Children eleven and under are free. If you're in the military, you have a military discount, which is ten dollars a day. There's free parking. Um, there you go. Fantastic family, kids area, the Halloween fun. I think I read you all that already. But who does the money go to? Do we know? 
I am not sure. I know a certain percentage of it goes to some organization, but I can't recall the name of the organization. So I have to find that out. And I'm sure they told us. I'm just I'm just drawing yeah, a blank I just, here. I just can't recall. Anyway, I'm reading from the brochure. We do have some of these brochures here at the radio station in the paddock. Well, if you want to stop by and, and ask for one, yeah. we'll be glad to give you one. And it's an annual event, too. So this is pretty cool. Go to the website, which is, again, Ocala. What's it called? Pumpkin? Ocala? Ocala Pumpkin Run. Dot com? Yep. Ocala Pumpkin Run. Dot com. All right, put it on your calendar, and uh, we'll take a little break, and we will be right back. You're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. Yes, George. George, you're all wet. I went to Devon Self Storage and put back my fishing gear. Okay. You know Devon Self Storage is open early and you had all day to bring your fishing gear back. And they're right across from Hobby Lobby. I know. I have my own code to get into Devon Self Storage. And their phone number, too, is 873-0777. So why did you wait till it started raining? I didn't. I slipped getting the boat out of the water. Boat. Bye. George. Extraordinary, inspirational, one of the world's most beloved musicals, Les Miserables, is live on stage at Ocala Civic Theater September 5th through October 13th. The tale of Jean Valjean's quest to redeem his past is set against the backdrop of the French Revolution. With an unforgettable score including I Dreamed a Dream, Master of the House, and Bring Him Home, this Broadway production will weave its magic in a live performance. To purchase tickets, call 236-2274 or buy online at ocalacivictheater.com. Don't wait one day more. Call now. Now is the time to take advantage of Florida Credit Union's CD specials. Our 36-month CD comes in at 1.26% APY. A 24-month is working for you at 1.0% APY. And our 12-month at 0.75% APY. All CD rate specials require $10,000 minimum. With friendly service and rates like these, it's not hard to see why Florida Credit Union has your CD options covered. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Call 352-237-8222 for more information. All right, thank you for tuning in. 23 minutes after 9 o'clock, Robin, you, you were away for a week. Did anything look different when you came back? Anything at all? Uh, yeah, the doors are a beautiful blue. <laughs> oh, they weren't painted yet? the doors. Oh, it seems- no, they, they, they were painted by the one coat, but... You know, it's, it it looks like Dan must have given them two coats because they are very very shiny. And and now they look beautiful. And did we have an IMAX theater in Ocala when you left? No, we did not. We now we do. We do. We have an IMAX theater. Really? Where is that? I, I, you know what? I think it's at the the Hollywood Sixteen. Oh wow! I, and I believe the first IMAX movie is called Gravity. Oh, how cool is that? So and and, I, and you know the whole thing with IMAX movies and we've seen them before in Orlando. We, yes, sure. And, and they were but they were never. Stories. They were always um, like document. Like we saw one at the Kennedy Space Center. Right. right. Now, now, what is the definition of IMAX? It's just a gigantic screen, right? I think so. Now, when we were kids, do you remember the screens were really big? Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and then as we as as we started to get these multiplexes, the the screens started to get smaller. Yes, they did. And now TV screens are getting big. Yeah. It's, it's almost as if you can now get a TV screen. Well, I guess you won't get one as big as the, uh, the the movie screen. But the movie screens became so small, we got used to it. Yeah. So now I'm curious, when we say IMAX, uh-huh. does that really, I mean, compared to like the movie screens when we were kids. Do, do you remember going to the movie theater when you were a kid? And you would be watching the, the previews, which they now call trailers, uh-huh. which I, it took me a while to get used to that because I always think a trailer should be behind something, not before <laughs> something, right? Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. So, so they call them trailers. But back then, you would watch the, the coming attractions, and then after the coming attractions, the, the, the curtains would open farther 
and you'd have a bigger screen for the actual feature. Do you remember? Yeah, I do remember that. That was so cool. And ta-da, I that. Ta-da, yeah. ta-da, 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 right? Yeah, it was so great. So you now know, I'm wondering. So the... so anyway, we have a, a, an IMAX theater now, and uh, that is cool. Unfortunately, I don't have any information on it. Not that I should be you know, advertising a movie theater for free, but but the sound is supposed to be better too. I mean, it's supposed to be all engulfing and oh. huge, and you feel like you're oh, really? really totally into it and. That would be that is something cool. I'm so glad Ocala has stepped up and uh, it's here. Oh, I hope people go to it because I hate to see something everybody's excited about that doesn't last. Yeah, oh, people will go to it. People believe, will go yeah. to. It. I guess it depends on the film that's being shown on that screen, Probably, right? Probably, yeah. So what they yeah. do? They they must have Probably. done something to put a big screen in it. So the storyline of this movie Gravity apparently is very good. Now I don't oh, okay. I don't know anything about it, but I was reading reviews on it and I was listening to Dirk Van I think it was Dirk Van on, on Morning Light on, on yeah. the NBC thing we carry in the morning oh I love that show I do too, I do too. Yeah. Uh, and they were talking about how it wasn't just uh, hype because of the size it wasn't just hype because of the th- it's a 3D tool three, is it I 3D believe one? so I think it is yeah. but they were also he was, he was also actually giving it a good thumbs up because it's just a good story mm-hmm. so I, I thought that was pretty cool so I don't I know I have this reputation I don't see many movies but I think I'm being I, I can think I hear my name in the distance <laughs> Larry <laughs> come check me out come see Gravity <laughs> I had heard that Sandra Bullock and uh, George Clooney star in it and that Sandra Bullock uh, is like the principal ca- character. Oh, really? She's like carries the movie from what the reviewers have said but they all said it's really incredible. Let me see. This is what a it says here story. about the movie. It says Dr. Ryan Stone is a brilliant medical engineer on her first shuttle mission so that must be her. Yeah. With veteran astronaut Matt Kowalski. Must be it must George be him. Clooney. But on a seemingly routine spacewalk disaster strikes the shuttle is destroyed leaving Stone and Kowalski completely alone, tethered to nothing but each other, and spiraling out into the blackness. The deafening silence tells them they have lost any link to Earth and any chance for rescue as fear turns to panic. Every gulp of air eats away at what little oxygen is left, but the only way home may be to go further out into the terrifying expanse of space. Oh, wow. Yeah, this sounds like an awesome. It does uh, sound pretty good. Awesome, awesome. Someone's on the movie. phone. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. My wife and I went to see it Sunday at five thirty, and it was sold out. Uh, it was very good. Worth seeing. Did you wow. see it on the IMAX theater? Yep. And and yep. and did that help it? Or, I mean, what, is it is it as big yeah. as we're picturing? Yeah, it's really huge and. Uh, I usually like to sit way in the back, but on the IMAX, uh, the closer you are, the more immersed you are in it. Really? Uh, and the 3D effects were excellent. The sound system just blows you away. Uh, it was a good story. There's only two actors in the entire movie. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. There's a, there's, there's a third astronaut, but he doesn't say a word, and he gets uh, wiped out the first few minutes. So, actually, Clooney and... Uh, and Sandra Bullock are the only two in the whole thing. Wow! And, and it did was you? Very good. Was the three D accomplished with glasses? Yes. Oh, you yeah. have to wear you glasses. Have to wear glasses. Huh. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And, huh. and they do have it in three D at uh, another theater at Regal, but it's not the IMAX. Oh. But, uh, okay. I'm at, if, if you go if you get a senior discount it's thirteen dollars. The regular price is sixteen dollars. Oh, okay, okay. Or, oh, we we yeah. might qualify. <laughs> we might qualify. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, yeah what? Well, I I qualified. I got with two of us twenty six dollars. What is what is wow, the it was, great? What it is, was worth it. What's the age for senior? Uh, I think I don't know, but I think fifty five. <laughs> oh, fifty five. Yeah, we we're in. We're in. There you we're go. In, we're in, Robin. Set. <laughs> All right. Wow, what a great review. That's outstanding. All right. Yeah, I liked hearing that. I like hearing that. Yeah, it was a job. It'll probably win an Oscar for uh, best special effects. Oh wow! Well, I appreciate that. Thank you for helping us out with that segment. All right. All right. All right. We we need to move forward and let's see what's up next. Uh, Tony Low Lowry. Yes. Uh, it's coming on. Uh, it's keeping your child in school. The connection between literacy, illiteracy, and juvenile delinquency. Should be interesting. We'll take a break and be right back. Mm-hmm. 
This Wednesday, October 9th from 5 to 8 p.m., Beautiful Moments Party Rentals would like to invite you to an evening of fun with food, drinks, and entertainment, all to benefit the Food for Kids program. There'll be face painting, pony rides, carnival games, and more, and it's all free. We only ask that you bring a non-perishable food item. Beautiful Moments is located at 3400 Southwest 60th Avenue. So join us for food and fun, all while helping the Food for Kids program. This Wednesday, 5 to 8 p.m. at Beautiful Moments Party Rentals. Hey everybody, this is Kelly Hart, your new host of the Ocala Magazine radio show. Join me every Friday at 10 a.m. when we bring the pages of Ocala Magazine to life with in-depth interviews from and about your community. So don't miss Marion County's favorite city magazine, Ocala Magazine, every Friday at 10 a.m. right here on 1370 a.m. and 96.3 FM, WOCA, The Source. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Legally Yours, brought to you by Fuller & Fuller Attorneys at Law. On the air every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. with John Fuller, a board-certified civil trial lawyer for over 25 years. John welcomes your questions from business to complex family matters to legal disputes. So tune in every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. for Legally Yours with John Fuller, right here on WOCA 1370 a.m. and 96.3 FM, The Source. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. Our tractor services include bush hog, disking, front end loader, box blade, and stump grinding. We also have zero turn mowers for the smaller paddocks, aisleways, fence rows, and lawn care. Fence row spraying is also available for weed control. We are licensed and insured. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440 or online at powellgene, G-E-N-E, at yahoo.com. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County is a ministry dedicated to improving lives by providing affordable and decent housing. Help them help others by visiting the Habitat for Humanity Ocala Home Store on Northwest 27th Avenue. To schedule a donation, give them a call and they'll come and pick it up. For more information, visit HabitatOcala.org. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County. Building homes, building hope, building community. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Would you like to burn more fat and lose weight faster? Just exercise on an empty stomach. If you're looking for work, your skills and experience may matter less than your personality. Almost 60% of HR managers rate people with interests similar to theirs higher than applicants with better skills. Couples, we need to practice healthy conflict resolution during the day to get better sleep at night. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. ABC News Now. I'm Karen Chase. As the government shutdown enters its ninth day, some agencies are scrambling to bring back furloughed employees for safety's sake. The FDA is calling back a handful of scientists to track a salmonella outbreak linked to chicken, and the CIA is calling intelligence agents to protect national security. Wall Street worries about a lengthy shutdown of sent stocks and 401k plans sliding. The Dow has dropped 900 points in the past three weeks. A high school Spanish teacher in Dallas is under fire after students discovered she once posed for Playboy. Some parents want her fired, saying she can't be a respected role model. Others say she's taught students the valuable lesson that once something's online, it can't be taken back. The secret to a happy commute is predictability and productivity. A Swiss study finds people can handle commutes of up to 45 minutes as long as they know how bad traffic will be and they can spice things up with radio or making conference calls. Tech blogs say Apple has set a date of October second to unveil a new iPad and a mini iPad with a bigger screen. This is ABC News. Tell us, what happened out there? I just had to keep driving forward. I knew the game plan and I was rewarded because of it. What was the key play? Using my BP driver rewards card when I filled up to save on gas on the way to the game. Do you use regular BP driver rewards. Become a member today and receive an instant 10 cent per gallon reward that you can use on your first fill up. Sign up now at BPDriverRewards.com. Single use only. Rewards good for up to 20 gallons. Terms and conditions apply. See BPDriverRewards.com for details and participating locations. Let's get. 
get it started. My business is on efficiency, and today I found my secret weapon, the new services center at Office Max. Their team helped us upgrade our credit card processing, and we saved a bundle. Didn't you have time for new equipment?